All right, why airlines lost their privilege? Uh, hey, Bill, big fan, love your podcast. You recently asked why airlines are not as prestigious as it was in the 70s. As a pilot, I have an answer for you. Oh, I love when the pilots write in. Sky pilot, why isn't it still great? In 1978, huh, I'm Jimmy Carter. Jimmy Carter signed the Airline Declar- Deregulation Act. Oh, leave it to a peanut farmer from Georgia to ruin the fucking prestige of airline travel. Prior to this law, the government allowed equal usage of federal airways among all the airlines. All right, you already lost me. Let me read this slower. The government allowed equal usage of federal airways among all airlines. So the only way for airlines to compete effectively was with good customer service. Okay, after the law went into effect... Airlines were able to bid for exclusive usage of certain airways. Airways are basically the streets in the sky. So different. Okay. Oh, I see. So then, and everybody had their territory. So it was like, that's right. There was Eastern Airlines. They just flew there. Okay. All right. American and United flew cross country. So it was like wrestling back in the day where everybody had their territories. And then rather than having one guy dominate the whole thing like Vince, it became a bidding war. Okay. After the law went into effect, airlines were able to bid exclusive usage of certain airways. So airways essentially gained monopolies on most of their routes with customers having little or no say in which airline to take. The airlines were able to get us by the balls. So now airlines business strategy has shifted from good customer service to monopolizing their airways and packing as many people as possible into their plane. Planes. Hope this helps. Uh, it started to. What should I look up? I should look up the Airline Deregulation Act. Now that all of a sudden, in the era of fake news, I'm, I'm being suddenly being held accountable for what the fuck I said. I can't believe this. I, you guys are so disappointing me. Can somebody please write in and mock these fucking assholes? All right, not saying the, 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 um, the pilot here. All right, Airline Deregulation Act. Airline Deregulation Act. Jimmy Carter and effects. Let's see what we got here. Oh, my God. All right, Wiki, a law that changed the airline industry. That's the one that looks like, okay, this is the one I will read up on. Are you guys going to try to make me informed? And then I'll, and you know what happens when you, you know what happens to become you informed? You become an arrogant ass. You know, you start smoking a pipe. Your fucking eyebrows are always trying to touch each other as you wrinkle up your forehead. No one wants to be around that. All right. A law that changed the airline industry beyond recognition, 1978. All right. Okay, before deregulations, airlines competed on service alone as fares were regulated by the government. I didn't know that. I mean, granted, I was fucking 10 years old, 1978. Many remember this era fondly as the golden age of aviation when stewardesses as flight attendants uh, were then known carved I can anyway, Chateaubriand on rolling silver carts and airlines put piano lounges in upper decks of their Boeing 747s. Passengers dressed up to board flights and flying was glamorous and exciting and mainly for the rich. Ah, that's why the liberals deregulation resulted in the rise of a new kind of airline, the low cost carrier LCC. At the time of deregulation, Southwest airline was a small regional airline prevented by CAB rules, I don't know what that is, from flying outside of Texas. Today, Southwest is the largest domestic U.S. carrier in terms of passenger traffic, something no one could have foreseen in 1978. Yeah, and that's back when stewardesses were fucking hot. So now it's a bunch of animals. They pack us all in, and then it's just like, yeah, all the hotties are like, well, fuck this. I'm going to go uh, sell jello shots at a goddamn one of those DJ shows. Wah, beep, 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 wah, 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 right? Southwest is a success story, but deregulation allowed. Yeah, I, I hate flying Southwest. 
I fucking hate it. You know what? I hate how the, the stewardesses sit there making jokes and fucking around. It's like, dude, my life is in your hands here. You're not making me more relaxed doing your fucking Dean Martin impression. Uh, but deregulation allowed airlines to innovate new business models. People, people express, I remember that. Remember Value Jet? That one went down. People express may have come and gone. It may someday be revived, but it, it and others like it shook up the white glove world of the U.S. airline industry and democratized travel. Hope I said that right. We may peer through our rose-colored glasses and yearn for the days of Chateaubriand and piano lounges, but ultimately companies like Southwest and newer ones like Spirit allowed more people to fly more often. Yeah, and now look at the result. You got people with no shoes on walking into the bathroom. Oh my God, it all fucking came full circle. Holy shit, do I like being informed? Deregulation left the international carriers like Pan Am and Braniff and to a lesser extent, TWA, Trans World Airlines, without robust domestic feeder networks. I don't know what that means. And it allowed domestic carriers like Delta Airlines to apply for international routes. Pan Am and Braniff scrambled to create domestic networks, but ultimately were unsuccessful. Although it took until 2000 for TWA to be absorbed into American Airlines. And some argue that massive consolidation of the U.S. airline industry in the last decade, which has resulted in three large carriers, four when Southwest is included, is deregulation's final act. The network carriers that survived Delta United and American learned to be tough competitors and combined existing domestic networks with the international networks acquired in large part by carriers like Pan Am that didn't make it. Get the fuck out of here. So now they have to drag people off flights, barefooted lunatics, and then you got people fucking, you know, you ever see those people that just fly around the world all the time trying to get miles and shit? Just created all these bottom feeders. Wow. Do you think a VIP airline would would make it? I wonder. You know, in this era of Donald Trump, if they just, if they didn't even try to be nice just be, I wish, I wish I could do a Trump impression. Just be a lot of animals. They're flying barefoot, a lot of barefoot. And then, you know, all the liberals would be like, yeah, were you saying that barefooted people shouldn't be allowed to be? A lot of bare feet, a lot of bare feet. <laughs> Dude, can you, what if, what if they had a fucking, you, you couldn't do it nowadays. If you had a fucking top line airline, okay? All first class seats, all hot stewardesses, you know, first of all, all the fucking, you know, all the fucking feminists would be up in arms, would all be up in arms saying that they, you're objectifying these women, blah, 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 blah. And at the end of the, I don't know, I agree with some of that feminist shit, but a lot of times I just feel like it's women who aren't good looking, hating on good looking women and just being mad that good looking women don't have to work as hard, you know? It's like that whole thing that you're going to somehow get people to give not as good looking women, not as good looking men, not as strong men, like a chance. That's not how it works. You got to like, you got to look at it like sports and realize that you're not the Jordan. You're not Sidney Crosby. All right. You're on the fourth line. Okay. So what you have to be is you have to be a fucking, you got to be a gamer, you know? This is coming from a bald, redheaded male. So go fuck yourself if you think I'm being elitist here, okay? You got to be scrappy. You got to go in the corners, all right? You got to drop the gloves every once in a while. You got to do that, okay? You're not going to get the calls. You're going to have to work 10 times fucking harder than other people to get, you know, half as much or however the expression goes, but it's, it'll make you stronger. And you know what's great? Is your fall from grace from your youth sixth as you slide into a four is not that bad. But at the end of everybody's life, everybody looks like a four or a two. Okay? But you you have a nice soft landing. You do a little bit of a belly flop. You get the wind knocked out of you between 20 and 60. All right? These fucking tens, I mean, they're falling off the top of a goddamn building. Okay? And a lot of them, they don't survive it. They don't. If you look at their Botox faces, they look like they landed face first. Their fucking lips are all swollen. 
I mean, Jesus Christ, look at these fucking, like, Nia watches this show, and these women will not stop taking fat from the back of their arms and injected them in their ass. And they got these stupid looking fucking asses now. And their legs look like my legs with this weird, like they look like ostriches. <laughs> I don't know why they did that. I, I just, I just don't fucking understand why. Like at what point, it's like they're literally like Michael Jackson, where Michael Jackson couldn't see what he's doing to his face. These women cannot see what they're doing to their asses. I don't understand it. So anyways, you know what? That was actually fascinating. And I make fun of the fact that I'm, I'm not a well-read guy because it gives me license to be lazy. And that's what I like to do best.